Right on time. <laughs> we'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight outside the ring. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is, and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh, Sino's here! And he's pretty early, too! Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Come on in, everyone. Come on, let's go inside. Candice, where? Whoa, you look furious. Do I? But gave it away. Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Please, don't be this anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> you fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind-boggling. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here, to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! You've made your bed. We may both be desert dwellers, but there's one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of King Deshret will only result in war. And war serves no one. The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry. I'll tell you everything I know. Please, just let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about King Deshret's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in King Deshret's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry. It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread the word about King Deshret's resurrection and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Wait, I'm telling the truth! We don't know anything! It was all him! <sighs> Two. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village, then the mystery guy takes them from there! <sighs> you gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me! 
That was indeed the truth. Traveler, go on. You have to believe me. If I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way. He, uh, um, that guy, he wears a cloak, and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself King Deshret's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> Smooth. Okay, speak. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the Academia. Hmm. Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the Village Keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. <laughs> They were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't gonna let that happen. Not the Academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the Village Keepers? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the Academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the Scholars. <sighs> Regardless, our top priority now is locating the Village Keepers. You're right. Isak is still waiting for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the Radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready! You look worried. Thinking about the village keepers? Yes. I'd look for them myself if I could. As members of our village, each one of them is very important to me. You have a strong sense of belonging here. I guess I'm the opposite. Mercs are stray dogs, wherever they go. Dia, don't say that. You can be a part of this community, too. <laughs> Thanks. I'll let you know when I feel like joining. What scheme is the Academia brewing now? Well, as you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. You were gone for ages! And now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? Hey, what's with the silence? You never think things through before asking questions. I'm giving you some time to make up for that. Well, 
You've heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time, so clearly I stayed in the village to investigate. Anyway, you plan to leave Aru village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? <sighs> yep. We're not gonna find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. <sighs> Enough with the silent treatment! No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All Haytham, you haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all talk! While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But before that... You need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? You mean, some of them lied to us? Hiding the truth does not necessarily equate to lying. Again, these people have their reasons. Remember what Gandis said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether King Deshret or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believed there was no further information to be found in this village. Glad you're following along. Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. The reason being, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. <gasps> Those eyes, those fierce eyes, you, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. It's quite obvious that she's intimidated by Sino's authority and strength. R right, you were asking about the vi I mean, the mad scholars. She corrected herself mid-sentence because she's aware that there are King Deshret fanatics in the village. If she sounds too friendly towards the village keepers, she could easily make herself the radical's next target. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. Remember? She made a point of denying her involvement in anything that occurs at night. But honestly, I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. After speaking to the village chief, it became clear that the village keepers had protected Aru village at night. In other words, the young miss was very much awake during that time. Then why would she lie? By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> Maybe you should ask her. I'll pass on this one. You said that she is afraid of me. If so, it's best if I stay out of this. We're on it! Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. <laughs> Mr. Alhatham, I'm aware of where you stand, but 
How can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Huh? What do you mean? We need to clarify our stance or something? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. Is it really that simple? Uh, may I call you Traveler? Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of King Deshret can truly change Sumeru for the better? Why is that? Hmm, that's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? Yeah! We came here from another nation, so it isn't wrong of you to be weary. And we aren't really residents of any one nation. But even so, we've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. To be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Oh, hey, them told us you have your reasons. It's okay. We understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in King Deshred. I don't belong to either side, and neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the Radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? Yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. I'm sure she'll keep your secret. <laughs> Alright. I'll tell you what I told Al Haytham. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes, I hear strange crying sounds in the night. <laughs> there are ghosts? Perhaps. I'm not sure. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance, and always carries very raw emotion. It used to be louder and more frequent, but ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often, and when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really hard to make it out. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear, and he's heard similar sounds at night. But, because we're in the middle of a desert, he would rather believe that they are the cries of beasts than ghosts. There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years.
This is the one. <laughs> Let's go in and take a look. Patience. Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. Until then... I'm taking a break. <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? What are you reading? Let Paimon see! Okay, sure. Position, which is the positional propensity of an entity in natural motion in contrast with an object in forced motion? Huh? When free from external influences, every entity displays the tendency to follow its natural trajectory? So, um, you got that? Oh, Paimon gives up! You keep reading your book! See ya! How is he so relaxed? Look at him, reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this! Hey! Paimon's your Kavat travel guide! Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already! And anyway, is that Paimon's fault that the books people read in Sumeru are so complicated? Getting so sleepy. Huh? What was that sound? There it is. It's coming from that direction. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Hmm? It's from below. Uh, but there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. Wow. It's like they tucked another hospital into this one. Oh, it looks like there are other mechanisms around here. Let's keep exploring! No escape! 
This is order. Gather. Surrender. Order guide you. Your sins weigh upon your soul. You stay condemned. You're... He can't speak, and his eyes are unfocused. But he looks too young to be anyone's grandfather. Also, why is he the only one here? Didn't expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded? With... people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. The symptoms are identical. Looks like we've found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? <laughs> It, they're acting the same way! Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of King Deshret's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the Academia. 
As well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto King Deshret's followers. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since King Deshret's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of King Deshret and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean... And knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. So, the human brain... Nope! Nah! -uh. Hyman doesn't want to think about this! I'm the Academia Scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind. But something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. Uh, Hyman's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting can knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder. What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge, but what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the Divine Knowledge Capsule, but to no avail. It seems like my way of thinking is too different from theirs. You mean, you're not even slightly interested in getting your hands on this forbidden stuff? All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge, but I'm not particularly interested in gods, so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. Sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected, just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait, didn't you step in to help because you felt sympathy for those poor people? Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, and the same can be said for the rest of Tevat as well. 
What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not sure. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The Divine Knowledge Capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. Hyman's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the Academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> you're probably right. Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. If only Miss Shani had a similar mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. <sighs> He won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru Village.